live in Winter John. We're here with Barnes Courtney at Alt 104.5. You have the distinct privilege of kicking off the day of music. No pressure. Yeah. Well, no, I like the pressure. You know, oh, you do. Yeah, you I like. Thrive? I like to sort of writhe about up there, like a disgruntled <laughs> seal pup. There will be writhing. You heard it here first. There's a lot of writhing in my set. It's quite modern what I do. Um, a lot of rock and roll too. I love it. I want to know. I this is the best quote that I saw ever. Actually, all of your quotes are pretty genius. But you said something like. I love the challenge of figuring out what every single audience needs, that every show is different, right? Certainly an outdoor show in Philadelphia in February is a little different than you would normally do, right? So you did the sound check. You've kind of gotten the vibe a little bit. Do you have an inkling as to what your Philadelphia Winter John crowd might need today? You got yeah. a vibe yet? I think maybe I'll start with sort of like playing some songs okay. <laughs> and then uh, and then the writhing <laughs> then i'll begin the writhing <laughs> yeah i don't know i need to see them i need to get like a hold of uh of their energies okay. and let them sort of muzzle about inside me it sounds like you want to like almost steal their souls but in a nice way yeah a little Far out. Out. i'll probably kiss each and every one of them passionately on the mouth oh that's so good i can't wait Barnes courtney taking the stage at 12 noon here at xfinity live on 1045 winter john one more question for you. Favorite thing about winter? Please don't say when it's over. <laughs> I think the sort of enormous amount of drinking that one is allowed to do. Allowed. It's banned in the summer. It's ba Well, you no, know, you can drink in the summer, but it, I think especially in England where I'm from, it's accepted that, you know, it's like gray buildings and gray skies, gray dreams. And when it's very cold outside, we kind of tend to huddle together in small areas and, and sort of enter into the realm of extreme inebriation. And I like that. I like that too. Cheers to that. Barnes Courtney, all 1045 said it back to the studio. And we keep going. Now we get to talk about the really the really thing. So we were talking about your star sign and not calling you by your real name, or you might get sucked back up into the I can't remember exactly what you said. Into the spirit realm. Yeah. Into the spirit realm. And you told me because your star sign was not what it actually is. Oh, that's right. You were like, I'm a tiny, I don't know. I'm a, I'm a guinea pig. Oh, yeah, guinea pig. That's what it was. But I did some reading, and you're actually a Scorpio, which is super fun. And today is actually the start of the Chinese New Year, which is the year of the tiger. And I'm not really into all this stuff, except for today is just like such a big celebration. And I just was like, well, what does this mean for Barnes Courtney and his future? What does it mean for And it's 2024. This is what the internet says. I don't have any special divining skills or anything, but the internet says... That in the Dragon's Year of 2024 for the Scorpio, amidst a world of undergoing transformations, Scorpio's autonomy and independence of thought will become their super weapons. Oh, but I, that's Do you want a, more? That's the Year of the Dragon. I thought you said we were in the Year of the Tiger now. No, no, no. This is, we're just ushering in the Year of the Dragon Oh, today. I see. No, I, I need to I know. I confused with Eye of the Tiger and Philadelphia and Rocky and uh, <laughs> maybe a cover later. I don't know. In the unpredictable whirlpool of events, Scorpio will emerge victorious. You're going to be victorious. Oh, nice. I do like being victorious. I know. It's a good feeling. Mm. And you'll also maintain calm and clarity of thought. We're getting very zen now. They will make decisions that ultimately lead to their success in 2024, it is indeed Scorpio who shall be the master of their own destiny. Oh, finally. <laughs> <laughs> we are there. We're there. Um, <laughs> now, uh, speaking of, what is 2020? Is this your first show of the year? Oh, oh man, is it? I don't know. I probably. Okay, you're like, I'm constantly on the road. I don't know what's happening. I sort of live in a constant soup of confusion and disarray. Yeah, and fun. And fun, obviously. And fun. 2024 looks like what? Did I read that there's been an album that's done for a long time, but it's sort of there's some been dumb adult businessy stuff that's Close. happened, like the ugly side of things. And so you're just sort of like waiting to get it all in order and we'll have maybe an album this year? It's a lot of adult like businessy oh. stuff. I just wanted to be Peter Rock Pan, flit and float about on the winds of fashion, you know, like and not worry about any of this stuff. But yeah, my, my record label got sold to another record label. And then uh, the team was replaced twice. So I got out of there. And it's been uh, a hefty amount of trials and tribulations trying to get this album out. Yeah. But uh, it's, it's, it's fine. It's all part of life's rich tapestry. Oh, my God. You're so good. And you're so positive, And you're so 
colorful in your in your language. But I <laughs> guess it's relating to as young as Amer- young in America is out, right? And that will eventually lead to more new music from Barnes and yeah. a whole lot of live rock and roll. I've been right? sitting on uh, on this record for ages. I don't know if it'll get tied up in this horrible political battle that's going on, but I'm just going to write more. You know, the creativity is infinite. <laughs> Who do we do we blame? Trump, Biden, or Obama? What <laughs> is this the political war that we're talking about? No, we're talking about different political wars. I think, I think we're beyond blame. Are label here. wars? No. I'd like if Trump, Biden, and Obama all sort of like came into my creative space and sort of like loved me in a maelstrom of uh, of light and sound. You're hearing it here. For, I, lo- I love this. Um, that would be real interesting. And then they can also be like, we all have Barnes Courtney's endorsement or I think they just no. keep, I just think each of them could do with a cuddle, you know? Like cuddle it out. They're yeah, they're very pent up and uh sort of always thinking about all these important things. They've got got a lot of thoughts going around in their mind. And I think they could just do with like a sandwich and like a little a little jam. Couldn't we all? I think so, yeah. yeah I, could. I, I think it. that's what Winter John will be for us today. <laughs> um, last question. So there's all sorts of really fun rock and roll glamorous stuff you get to do. And then you get asked to come and play outdoor <laughs> February shows in Philadelphia. But I think even if it was 12 degrees like it was here last year, that actually pales in comparison to some of the like harrowing stuff you go through. You're a little bit like a superhero in that you have this like, I like this conversation. big on stage, you know, persona and it's rock and roll and it's showbiz and all those things. And then you sometimes travel in a bus that shoots sparks out at you or that can't maintain heat. It makes you ill and that has exhaust that leaks back into it. Uh, what's the absolute just nobody would believe it if they told you worst thing you've experienced on the road in terms of things just going horribly wrong and then i want to know the most like cool rock and roll i can't believe i'm here this isn't my real life sort of thing do you have a, a yin and yang or a a, a down and up sort of yeah i've had many many peaks and troughs so peaks and troughs i think um yeah when when the the bus broke down uh, multiple times. That it, same bus, the sparking exhaust bus, or yeah, well, bus? my tour manager, like not this gentleman over here, who's very proficient at his job. He Good. booked the same bus company twice that had broken down. So we ended up outside of Tallahassee in the middle of nowhere, and and the bus will not move. I've got a show to get to, and the driver goes out to try and fix whatever issue is happening, and sprays like molten hot like oil all over his hands so we're all inside having breakfast he comes in he's like skin melting off the bone he's I think I out. shouldn't be laughing I'm sorry <laughs> How dare you? we couldn't get an ambulance or a taxi or or a limo like nothing so I'm stood like trying to flag down cars to hitchhike to the show with my acoustic guitar but I'm sort of like dressed like a futuristic prostitute in like red boots and white pants and like a ludicrously tight shirt with half of my tits out uh, and, and so people just won't start. Yeah, my tour manager's out there. He's sort of an enormous, imposing, muscle-bound character. So I don't know if they thought he was like a cartel member, but people were were they were just not stopping. And after about an hour and a half, I got picked up by a, a military vet. It was a lovely man who was looking after uh, a sort of addled drug addict. Uh, that he'd taken under his wing, okay. and I end up sat in the back with this lady who's like I don't know tweaking if I be out. Believing any of this story, but please keep that, going. You specifically asked for a story that wasn't believable. <laughs> Just deliver. <laughs> You're like, no, this is my real life. It actually happened. And then we got to the to the venue, like by the skin of my teeth, and yeah. I did the whole show acoustic. I mean, um, that's amazing. The show must go on is embodied in that story, very much so. Meanwhile, bus driver, no hands. Yeah, and I think he was trying to drive. I think he finally got his hands wrapped up, but we didn't have anyone who could steer the bus. So he's like trying to steer this thing with his like, you know, <laughs> sodden like pain mittens. <laughs> I don't even need to hear the really rock and roll glamorous story. <laughs> but do you have one in mind? I mean, just just before on my thirty third birthday, uh, the last show, the thirty third tour uh, gig Day? of the tour, yeah. um, Jared Leto asked me to play the kill with him uh, to to finish his set, like at the end of uh, Corona Capital Festival. But that was pretty nuts. I went out and like it's all pyrotechnics and yeah. you know like confetti. I mean, what a, an incredible way to like finish the year and 
careful, don't get set on fire while you're doing this. This is, this is the best moment of your life. Did that happen to no, him? No, 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 to you. Just oh, like, to me. Yeah. Okay, that would happen to me. If, it you're, <laughs> if you're not used to pyro, like you're like, oh, I have to watch out for fire. It happened okay. to Michael Jackson, you know. I, it did. Yeah. Pepsi commercial. I think yeah, Pepsi we're commercial. gonna we're all going down that Google rabbit hole in a little while to verify the the information. This doesn't feel like the best um, note to end our conversation on what we will say it's going to be a good old rock and roll show there will be fire even if there's not pyrotechnics see what i did there uh-huh. <laughs> barnes courtney kicking off the stage in winter john today we are so glad you're here with all 104.5 and with oh, philly i'm Welcome so back. happy to be here i'm so hungover let's do this thing let's go let's go let's go <laughs> cheers <laughs> <laughs>